Hi, this is Apostle Anthony Munns with Grace Plus Nothing Ministries. I want to thank you for tuning in today to watch our show, The Barriers Breaker Show. It is a pleasure and an honor bringing the living word of God to you here this morning. As always, we just like to just ask you to uh, log on to our website at graceplusnothing.org. Once again, it's graceplusnothing.org and listen to any of our archive shows. Uh, anytime you like to correspond with us, you can do so via our uh, website. And our goal and our mandate here is to tear down the walls of man-made traditions and religion and to bring the believer into the light of the true and living God. And it's just a pleasure of doing that. It's a, it's a mandate that God has bestowed upon us. It's one that's not popular, but it's one that's effective. And I am one that's committed to doing the effective work of the kingdom of God. And so uh, you are in store for a treat today. If you have never watched our show today, you're in for a treat. We may be a little radical. Uh, sometimes, but you will get the very essence of what God is saying from heaven. And so if you want to be liberated, this is the place for you. If you want to keep it on the real, this is certainly the place for you. So I ask that you stay tuned, don't move for the next 30 minutes and get ready to be blessed by dynamic teaching here today. Five, four, three, two, one. The following show is rated M for mature. M for if you're mature. caught up in religion and tradition, please leave the room now. If you want to keep it on the real, this is the show for you. Welcome to the Barrier Breakers television show. Television. The purpose of this television show is to tear down, break up, and ultimately annihilate the traditions of the organized church. Our goal is to destroy the barriers of man-made traditions that have kept the believer in bondage and to bring the believer into the light of the true and living God that breaks all shackles and embraces everyone and to empower the believer with the message of grace plus nothing. Grace plus nothing. So wake up, stretch out, and get ready for your 30-minute spiritual workout with your host, Apostle Anthony Munns. Anthony Munns. Good morning and welcome to the Barrier Breakers television show. I am your host, Apostle Anthony Munns, coming to you this Sunday morning. First of all, I would like to thank and give honor to God, my Lord, and my personal Savior. Fears, I know if it were not for Him, meaning God, I would not be able to do what I'm currently doing. But most importantly, I know God to be my source. Once again, viewers, I know God to be my source. And if you are a believer, you should know God to be your source as well. And so if you are not a believer, allow me to extend the hand of salvation to you. One becomes a believer by believing in the finished work. Now, you may ask, what is that finished work? That finished work is what God did through his son, Jesus. And Jesus was the one and the only one. That's why he is referred to as the last Adam because of what first Adam did in the garden. He, meaning Jesus, was the last Adam. He came to redeem us. And he, in turn, gave up his life willingly to bridge the gap that sin has called the disconnection, if you will. And his blood paid for it all. And so the finished work is believing in Jesus' death, Jesus' burial, Jesus' resurrection, Jesus' ascension, and most importantly, Jesus' seating. His seating is the finished work. When Jesus said upon the cross, it is finished, he meant every I was dotted, all T's were crossed. Every stone that needed to be turned over was turned over. There's nothing that he did not complete because he completed it all. And his blood paid for it all. So if you believe that and you receive that, the Bible says you are saved and we are saved by grace through faith, not of works. So we cannot boast about what we did or didn't do or don't do or, and all this kind of stuff. We're saved because of what he did. And thus we believe unto righteousness. And so now you are in right standing with the father because you have received that finished work. So with that being said, God, we just want to praise you for everything you've done for us. But most importantly, we want to worship you simply because of who you are. Oh, my God, that's powerful when we understand it. Worship him simply because of who he is. Some of you may be having some circumstances right now that seem bleak. Worship God simply because of who he is. Worship him. Worship him simply because of who he is. Oh, my God. He's everything you need for him to be. That's powerful. Mm, need to preach that one. Covenant partners, I'd like to thank you all for covenant yourselves with this ministry. 
uh, because of your financial support, we're able to have this television show on. We're able to do our local radio show. We're able to do outreach and everything that the ministry does is because of your willingness to want to sow into this ministry, sowing into fertile soul. And so I do speak the blessings of the Lord upon you all's lives, covenant partners. And we are so appreciative that you have chose to be a part of this ministry. Also to the Now Network and the owners there and the staff, we want to speak the blessings of the Lord upon you all's lives also. And thank you for allowing us on your station. Um, anytime you'd like to correspond with us, you can do so by going to our website at graceplusnothing.org. Once again, it's graceplusnothing.org. You look at the bottom of the screen and uh, all, all of our information is there. We have resources. We have a link to our YouTube channel, Grace Plus Nothing Ministries. We have a uh, link to our podcast, the Barrier Breakers podcast. Uh, everything that you need to know about us, resources that we have out there, they're up, up on our website at graceplusnothing.org. So feel free to reach out to us and to obtain those resources that we have for you. Now today, um, I'm not going to belabor the time. I'm going to go and dive right into our teaching. This is a familiar passage of scripture that I'm going to be teaching from this morning. Um, last week, I believe it was, we had um, God's Blueprint Bible Study. That's a Bible study that we have every Tuesday evening via Zoom. It's uh, from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you would like to be a part of that, get in contact with the ministry and we'll send you a link to that Bible study every Tuesday evening. Um, but on the Zoom Bible study that we have every Tuesday evening, um, this particular session, which was uh, a couple weeks ago, we had uh, a question and answering session. Um, those individuals who are uh, committed on a weekly basis to uh, attend that Bible study, they have been learning about spirit, soul, and body. They've been learning a lot about the law of identification and substitution. They've been learning about their position in Christ. And, and they've been learning about those things for the last several months. And we're still yet learning. But um, God had me to do a, a question and answering session. And so one of the uh, participants in that Bible study, um, she shared something with me. And you all that uh, follow our ministries, whether it's television or what have you, you all know I, I oftentimes speak of my addiction. Some of you are paying close attention now because you're thinking about, well, what addiction does he have if you do not uh, regularly view our broadcast? Well, my addiction is no different than anyone else's addiction. All of us have our uh, addictions, but my most prevalent addiction is chocolate. And so I often speak about uh, the double jo the double chocolate drumsticks that I so love, uh, Lindor's chocolate, double chocolate Klondike bars, uh, Kit Kats. I love all of those things, and they are my kryptonite. And so as I've gotten older, you know, I need to watch um, those type of things because I cannot eat just one. I can't eat just one double chocolate drumstick when I buy them. I have to eat about three. And still yet wanting and yearning for more. And so one of the ladies uh, shared something in the Bible study that particular evening when we having the question and answering session. And she brought up, she said, you know, I, 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 I've been I've been eating no double chocolate drumsticks that you have spoke of. And I had no idea. I was like, what did you just say? She said, Apostle, I've been eating those double chocolate drumsticks and I can't even go down the aisle now. She said, because you used to talk about them all the time and I just didn't believe they were that good until I tried them. And she started laughing and she said, when I tried them, they're really that good. And now I'm addicted to them. <laughs> and so I began to laugh. But in the same breath. I understood where she was coming from. So I'm working up to something. That's why I'm taking my time and in introducing the text that I'm about to bring to you all for our teaching this morning. And so as she was saying that, and um, we were we were all laughing and everything, but I, I really understood where she was coming from. I said, see, now you see what I was talking about. She said, Lord have mercy. I see what you were talking about. She said, I can't, I can't, I can't eat them. She said, I, cause I can't just eat just one or two. She said, I, I just eat them. She said, they are delicious. I said, I know they are. And so, um, 
sometimes we and, and the body of Christ need to learn from this. Sometimes we uh, be damning an individual for their particular uh, addiction that they may have or whatever sinful act that they're currently involved in. We begin as uh, 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 believers who are religious minded and love condemning people. We begin to uh, speak down to those individuals who may have an immediate issue that has come to surface and not knowing that it could be you. The Bible tells us that we need to be careful about those things because uh, the Apostle Paul says if it wasn't for the grace of God, then there go I. So we have to always understand that. And so um, I told her as we were laughing and chuckling and and she was explaining to me how she's addicted to the double chocolate drumsticks. Now, I said, you know, that a preach. And so I the same week, I, I, I preach it on our uh, uh, radio show. And so this morning, I'm going to bring you to you all, the viewing audience, that teaching that I taught a week or two ago. So I'm going to ask you to turn in your Bibles to John chapter 8. Once again, that's John chapter 8. John chapter 8. And I'm reading out of the King James Version of the Bible. So mine may read a little differently, but as always, the Holy Spirit gives you revelation and illumination. And always, y'all go back and read these scriptures for yourself and spend time with God and see what God illuminates to you. So in John chapter 8, this is a very familiar passage of scripture. People have preached it. I've preached it myself and uh, we've shouted off of it. We've, we've, we've had deep um, discussions in our Bible studies uh, on it and, and uh, sermons have been taught around it and about it. So this morning, I'm going to bring to you all some things that the Holy Spirit spoke to me when he uh, 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 instructed me to teach the lesson I'm about to teach this morning. So in John chapter eight, beginning at verse number one, and once again, I'm reading out the King James version of the Bible and it reads, Jesus went into the Mount of Olives, verse two, and early in the morning, he came again into the temple and all the people came unto him and he sat down and taught them. Verse three, and the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken, vitally important, a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said they, 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 so these people and in verse three, it says they, they, they brought to him, meaning to Jesus, a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they, they caught her in the very act in what she was doing. And they took her while she was in the very act of what she was doing and brought her to Jesus. Verse four, they sat, uh, they say unto him, meaning unto Jesus, master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. So she was doing the do. <laughs> I, 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 I want you to begin, if you're not too religious, to, to begin to, uh, uh, because we live in a movie generation, get a panoramic view of what is happening here via the text. So they're saying she was caught, Jesus, in the very act. So here it is, verse number five. They said, now Moses, Jesus, in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? In other words, the Mosaic law says, Jesus, that we are to stone her because she was called in the act. In other words, she's guilty as charged, Jesus. Now, we know what Moses said. Moses said that we should stone her. But what do you say, Jesus? They was attempting to set Jesus up. So, with that being said, verse 6, this they said, tempting him, meaning tempting Jesus, that they might have to accuse him. They was trying to see if he was going to go contrary to the Mosaic law. And if he was, they were going to say, gotcha. <laughs> Doesn't it sound like some church folks? But Jesus stooped down. Here it is. But Jesus stooped down. How many times has Jesus stooped down for you and I? But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground. As though he heard them not. In other words, they were standing there accusing this woman, talking about the Mosaic law and saying, this is what the law says, Jesus. Jesus acted like he didn't even know what they were saying. He stooped down and began to write. <laughs> Verse 7. So when they continue asking him, now they're still asking Jesus, and Jesus is down on the ground writing. He lifted up himself. He stood up and he said unto them, He <laughs> Jesus smooth with y'all. Jesus can cut you a hundred times and you won't even know you cut till you see the blood. Jesus said, he 
that is without seeing among you, meaning the ones who brought the woman caught in the very act of adultery, let him cast a stone at her. In other words, those of you who brought her to me, if you're without sin, if you're pure as the white driven snow, pick up a stone and throw it at her according to the law that you're quoting to me. <laughs> Isn't it somehow Jesus can take that which the enemy has meant for evil and turn it around for his good? And that's what Jesus did. Now they come at Jesus trying to hem him up and Jesus took the very thing they was using to try to hem him up and flipped it on them and used it. And now it's in their face. Now what they going to do with it? Verse eight. And again, <laughs> Jesus smooth y'all. He stooped down and wrote on the ground and they, verse nine, which heard it, meaning heard what Jesus had said about casting the stone, being convicted by their own conscience. <laughs> the very thing that they was trying to accuse him of and him him up, they was now convicted by themselves because they knew they were guilty. They knew they was without sin. They knew they didn't have the right to cast a stone at her because they was just as guilty, which tells me some of them may have slept with her. Slept with her. <laughs> Went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone. And the woman standing in the midst, the very place they brought her, standing there in the midst, right there with Jesus. Jesus said in verse 10, when Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, Jesus was still on the ground writing and they had no walked away from the oldest to the youngest. He, he was still down there writing. And he looked up. He said, oh, OK. It was just Jesus and the woman. And Jesus, he said unto her, verse 10, woman, where are those thine accusers? Have no man condemned thee? Were the ones who was trying to get me to condemn you and they had already convicted you and they wanted me to pass judgment on you so they could destroy you. Where are they? That's what Jesus was in essence saying. And the woman said in verse 11, no man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Once again, go and sin no more. And we're going to come back to that for that passage of scripture in verse 11 of John chapter 8. But if we had to title this, we're going to entitle this teaching this morning. My hand was caught in the cookie jar. <laughs> Once again, it's entitled my hand, my hand. I started entitled it. Your hand was caught in the cookie jar. No, we got to make it personal. My hand. My hand, your hand, our hands was caught in the cookie jar. You all know over the last several weeks I've been speaking using that text and it comes from it's a it's an idiom, which simply means it's an, uh, another way of saying stealing. And we know that uh, the phrase comes from uh, it, the phrase is often used as another way of saying somebody who has done something that they were guilty of and shouldn't have done. And they was caught in the very act. So this is what happened in John chapter 8 when they caught the woman in the very act because they brought her to Jesus they said Jesus this woman was caught in adultery then they go on to say she was caught Jesus in the very act in other words they saw her doing the do now we don't know where she did the do at we don't know if she did the do behind the building we don't know if she went out in the woods we don't know if they went over to someone's house we don't know if they was at one of those Pharisees or 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 or, 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 or scribes homes <laughs> it could have been one of them <laughs> the Bible doesn't tell us these things but but what it does tell me in my reading is that when Jesus said <clears throat> in verse number seven, he that is without sin, cast the first stone, which tells me later on in verse eight, and nine says now they were convicted in their own conscience, in their own minds. And the reason that they were because it could have been the Bible doesn't say it, but it could have been that they were caught in the very act with her one of them could have been there or all of them could have been there. i don't know but one thing about it they did go where she was if they weren't always already there so they were there whether they came there as she was in the act with someone else other than any of them but they saw what was going on perverts <laughs> they were perverts and but but they saw her doing the act so they went in and took her. 
We don't know if they even had time to dress her. They might have brought her just like she came in the world to Jesus. I don't know. But we have to visualize this thing, how the text is laid out. We have tried to make the scriptures too churchy. We got to bring the text where it is and where we are, most importantly. So when you were caught with your hand in the cookie jar, and I don't know what you were doing when you got caught with your hand in the cookie jar, but I know my hand has been caught in the cookie jar many times. And but when your hand is caught in the cookie jar, that simply means you were caught in the very act. This woman was caught with her hand in the cookie jar. <laughs> and so this is why it's so important for us to understand what the text is saying so we can make it a, 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 a relate to our own lives. Because oftentimes when you have been caught with your hand in the cookie jar, See, this is why uh, the young lady in, in the Bible study session, she said, uh, I said, why do you ever tell me that you were addicted to the double chocolate drink? She said, she said I just didn't want to tell you. <laughs> she said, but they are sure enough good. She admitted her hand has been caught in the cookie jar. But did I want to stone her? Certainly not. Why? Because my hand had been in the cookie jar. So religious folks would say, where well, you're telling people to go and partake of something that is not of God. No, what I'm doing, I'm liberating people in their mindset. Because when we studied the text out, this is what Jesus in essence did with the woman who was caught in the very act. And that's why I said we're coming back to verse 11 here momentarily. But allow me to just flow with this for a little while longer, if you would, please. And so when we look at the text, the text takes its time to really give us a visual of how these men were who brought this woman to Jesus. They were walking with their heads up in the air, looking down their nose at people, their chest stuck out. They were acting holier than thou. And, and, and they had created an atmosphere where those who were subservient to them would not question them, would not go and say, well, you're just like me or you're no different than I am. They, in essence, had isolated themselves from those who they deem as lesser. Is that not what is happening in the church today? Is not is that not what is happening when we are supposed to be coming together as one and, and fitly joining together and getting this body ready? In other words, the body of Christ ready for Jesus when he comes back. But we're drawing lines of division, divide, uh, uh, divisive tactics, and we're stoning our brothers and sisters that we should be loving on because the bible says with loving kindness have i drew thee but instead we're pushing them away where they're wanting to go back to that which they have come from because that from which they come from it treats them better than way we have treated them in the church you don't have to say amen because i don't preach for amens you can turn the channel i really don't care but for those of you who who have been in situations like that you you have been touched <laughs> By the word of the living God. So this woman. We don't know why this woman was doing what she was doing. That's another thing. You don't know why people. Hands are caught in the cookie jar of life. You don't know why that woman is. Is sleeping around with men. And, and doing what she's doing. You don't know what have drove. That individual to do what they're doing. You don't know what drive. What what. What 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 has drove me oftentimes to go down the ice cream aisle and food line and buy a box of double chocolate drumsticks? Yes, yeah. Some of you say, "Oh, it's lust of the flesh." True, but there's always a driving force behind what pushes a person to do something. And so, by oftentimes we we don't take the time to understand or, or talk with the person. It could be that they're dealing with something at home and their way of venting and, and, and processing it is being drove to ice cream, chocolate, alcohol, food, gossiping, church. And when I say church, I'm not talking about organism. I'm talking about organization. <laughs> okay, y'all don't want to play fair this morning, do you? You don't want to play fair this morning, do you? But God is letting us know that all of us have our hands. If I'd been thinking I'd had a cookie jar here. All of us have been caught with our hands in the cookie jar of life. And I don't know what your circumstances are. But one thing that I do know. If they have caught you in the very act. In the cookie jar. <laughs> Jesus says. Those who are accusing you. <laughs> pick 
up a stone and stone them. Because <laughs> if you're without sin, stone them. <laughs> and it's something when the word convicts you. See, Jesus was the word made flesh. So the word convicted thine accusers. When your accusers, thank you, Holy Spirit, brings you to God. This is why the Bible tells us that Satan goes to God. And he's saying, look at her, look at him. And God just looks at his right hand and says, it's paid for. <laughs> I'm not concerned about that because he, my son, has paid for it. So when thine accusers in the earth realm talk about you and they say all manner of things about you and they may have brought you to your pastor or whatever the case may be, we got to understand something. The word says, if you are without sin, cast the first song. If you are without fault, then go ahead and do what you're supposed to do. But the word speaks and when the word speaks it'll convict you this is why the bible says when in actuality when they heard the word speak when they heard jesus speak they were convicted in their own minds it says conscious in the translation that i have but it was convicted in their own minds why because the word convicted them <laughs> jesus spoke the word he was a word made flesh he spoke the word and the word convicted them and so it goes on to say now, Jesus stooped back down again. And people have often wanted to know, what did Jesus write? I like what Bishop Clarence McClendon said years ago. I heard him preach. He said, the fact of the matter is this. It's not about what he wrote. It only matters that he wrote. <laughs> you got to think about the logic behind it. It's not important what Jesus wrote because it was the word writing. The word Jesus, word made flesh. He was writing. Who who knows what he wrote? I really don't care what he wrote, but it goes back to what Bishop Clarence McClendon said. It matters that he wrote. The word was writing. <laughs> and whatever the word wrote, <laughs> it did not condemn the woman who was caught in the very act. It didn't condemn her. It did not condemn her. We got to understand this thing. See, anytime when you feel condemned, that's self talking to you. It's a difference between being condemned and being convicted. The word would convict us because we see where the word convicted those accusers who brought the woman to Jesus.